conspiracy theories, uh, which have become quite popular amongst those people who identify as progressive. I know you've been fairly critical of those ideas. Why do you think that they're popular now? Well, first of all, there are conspiracies. No, no question about it. In fact, sometimes it takes a, sometimes they have big effects. Uh, like take uh, the suburbanization of America, the huge government, state, uh, corporate social engineering projects, which were largely dedicated to uh, maximizing the inefficient use of, of uh, fossil fuels with everything that goes on, goes along with it. Well, you know, it may destroy the species, so it's not insignificant. But it did start as a literal conspiracy of uh, General Motors, Standard Oil of California, and Firestone Rubber to buy up and destroy the fairly efficient uh, electric transport system in Los Angeles and other cities, destroy it and turn it into the monstrosity that we have. Okay, that was a conspiracy. In fact, they were taken to court and you know, fined a couple thousand dollars. Uh, but uh, look, looking for something hidden that's sort of beneath the surface that's really running things, uh, I think that's a, sometimes it's true. But uh, usually, it's, in my view, it turns out to be a pathology. Uh, and I think it comes from a sense that I don't like the way things are. And so there must be some hidden hand somewhere that's uh, manipulating and uh, controlling it. Whereas when you look closely, I think you just see the normal workings of institutional structures. Uh, that makes you, of course, raise questions about the nature of the society, uh, who we are, how we tolerate it, and so on. Uh, so, for example, it's appealing to believe that, say, John F. Kennedy, one of the main figures in conspiracy theory, what are called conspiracy theories, it would be nice to believe he's just a fantastically wonderful guy who's going to do all kind of great things, and they shot him down just because he was so wonderful and the world has gone off, you know, hell in a hand basket ever since then. That's a comforting feeling. It's less comforting to recognize what I think the documentary record demonstrates in the historical record, that he was a kind of a hawk who uh, you know, was a, a politician, you know, trying to uh, uh, um, gain power by uh, the usual techniques. He was kind of affable and friendly and smiled and knew how to butter people up. But if you take a look at what he was doing, it was pretty horrible. It's one of the worst, most dangerous creatures of the 20th century. And fortunately, he didn't happen to blow up the world, but he came pretty close to it. And that's a less comforting position. I happen to think it's largely true. Same with Barack Obama. Uh, but uh, you can see the appeal of trying to find, well, take, say, Obama. There's a widespread feeling on the left, um, you know, Middle Eastern commentators and so on, that he's really dedicated to doing wonderful things. It's just that dark forces are preventing it. So we just have to hope that he's going to overcome the dark forces, you know, like a, a, a hero in a fairy tale and somehow get rid of the witches and dragons and everything will be nice. I don't think that there's any truth to that. That's exactly what he seems to be. And, there, and nobody's going to ride in on a white horseback and get rid of the dragons and the uh, witches. You know, we've got to do it ourselves. That's harder. Right. So would you say that conspiracy, conspiracy theories in general are not particularly helpful for radical politics and radical action? If they're inaccurate. I mean, if they're accurate, as they sometimes are, sure, that helps explain the world. Uh, but most of what happens is, I mean, it's kind of a, I mean, you know, in a sense, it's a conspiracy if uh, uh, the board of directors of General Motors uh, get together and decide, okay, here's our plans for next year. Well, it's kind of a conspiracy, but uh, we don't call that a conspiracy theory because it's the normal working of institutions. And similarly, when the uh, you know, take, say, during the Second World War, the uh, high State Department uh, planners and uh, comparable features from, figures from the private sector, like the Council on Foreign Relations, did meet and extensively discuss the nature of the post-war world and laid plans which were pretty well, well executed. Well, this happened to be public, 
but is it a conspiracy? Um, you know, they got together, they worked out plans, they later implemented them, small group of people, they have uh, special interests, not the interests of the population. But exposing that makes perfect sense. It's not what's called a conspiracy theory, because that's the way institutions operate. Uh, and that makes sense. You know, on the other hand, uh, you know, this tr take, uh, I don't like to use the term because there are conspiracies. It's called a conspiracy theory if we don't like it or something. It's not the way to look at it. What you have to ask is whether the theories of a conspiracy are accurate. So let's take, say, uh, the idea that uh, the Bush administration uh, plotted to uh, blow up um, the World Trade Center. Uh, that attracts a huge support. Um, maybe a third of the population believes it, and very dedicated groups of people, many of them on the left, are just committed to that. Well, you know, is it plausible? I mean, suppose that the, uh, let's say somebody consp conspired to blow up the World Trade Center. Uh, we know what they did. They blamed it on Saudis. I mean, would the Bush administration blame it on Saudis, thereby shooting themselves in the, you know, in the feet? I mean, if, if they wanted to bomb Iraq. So if they organized it, they would have blamed it on Iraqis. Uh, uh, then they'd have uh, no problem at all getting congressional authorization, a UN resolution, you know, NATO would join in, everybody would say, fine, let's invade Iraq. Instead, whoever did it blamed the Saudis. Uh, well, that absolves the Bush administration short of outright insanity. Uh, why harm your relations with a valued ally instead of uh, blaming it on the people you want to invade? So that's already a barrier to you know, that, uh, uh, even entertaining the possibility. And uh, the elaborate work that goes into, you know, is there nanothermite in building set, uh, seven or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of beside the point. Yeah, maybe there was, maybe there wasn't, uh, uh, unless you have pretty sophisticated knowledge of uh, uh, civil engineering and structural architecture. You can't even make a judgment as to whether it means anything. Uh, but there are obvious, clear, phenomena that, uh, that the theory has to deal with somehow and doesn't. And if it doesn't, I don't, see any, I don't see a reason to take it seriously. So yes, then it becomes one of these kinds of conspiracy theory that just mislead and misdirect en energy and so on. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if, say, 40 years from now we get uh, de declassified documents uh, which show that the Bush administration was very sympathetic to these theories. It was, uh, it was diverting energy from real crimes uh, into things that are basically a wild goose chase. Actually, we have documents like that from about the Kennedy assassination. So there are uh, uh, Pentagon advisory documents which advise the Pentagon, the government, to uh, periodically leak information about the Kennedy assassination, uh, basically so as to keep people out of our hair you know, let them follow those non non-existent leads instead of asking us questions that we really don't want to answer. So, and, real conspiracy theory there. And, and there, we have the actual documents, and it wouldn't wouldn't shock me if there are similar things about 9/11 conspiracies. I mean, they do have an immediate effect. They draw a lot of energy and effort away from major crimes, the crimes which are a lot worse than blowing up the World Trade Center. So that's convenient for the powerful. And since the, you know, the theories uh, seem to have just major logical problems that I don't see how they confront, like what I mentioned, uh, it, it does seem to me the, the kind of theory that uh, misleads and misdirects. And I, it's, it's not hard to see why it's popular. I mean, some terrible things are going on. There should be some dark hand behind it. Uh, we hate Bush and Rumsfeld for good reasons, so maybe they're behind.